the Traders Club. Today is May 11, 2018. Friday. Uh, hope you guys had a good week trading this week. Welcome to the market update. Again, my name is Kay Kim with the Traders Club. Um, today, uh, we're going to be talking about Spider, IWM, Qs. Let's do XLF today. Uh, let's talk about Apple, Twitter, Gold, and Silver, and call, we'll call it a day. Let's kind of follow up with what we've, been, what we've been talking about last week. So when was the last week? Uh, let's see here. Fourth? So we ended it. Yes, yeah, so this was the last week right here. So it was prior to that level. We talked about holding. Uh, remember we talked about holding above 265 level. Right? That's what we talked about. 265, 264-ish level should the price come down. Well, you can see that we did come down here and we bounced from that. But I think the most highlight of this week's move is this island reversal, right? You can see that. I'm going to actually make that into a dark green. Mm, like, actually, let's make it a little bit lighter green. Um, there and then I'm gonna do this to separate that so that island reversal ladies and gentlemen it is very very important and we did have island reversal here do you remember that we talked about this back in uh, April we had a gap down gap up and we wanted to make sure that that gap doesn't get filled for this island reverse to continue or this buying pressure to continue with the gap quickly got filled and then you know bears brought it down well we got another attempt from the bulls we opened another island reversal so bulls are fighting right bulls are working bulls are working hard to open another uh, bullish or you know island reversal here actually if we actually go to 65 minute chart it's actually easier to see here so you can see i haven't changed uh, much here since the last update you can see we talked about here last time we feel this gap that's what acted support that's why we've been tracking gap gap is important especially when market shake and bake like this a lot of times th this is what's going to happen it actually goes up you know goes to the next gap level feel that gap comes down feel downside gap and then goes up so you can see how the market has been moved or moving kind of based on those gaps you know the bears or the bulls want to go and fill this gap and the bears come down and fill down the upside gap and so the both of those gaps are filled however with the recent move let me actually remove this um baby notch there and then read the recent gap right here you see this downside gap upside gap that is a perfect uh textbook uh island reversal that we have in this chart and let's actually mark that um, right there and not only that we have clear this prior pretty significant resistance there pivot now with this move what do we have now well with that we have higher high do you remember we talked about it last week what do we talked about on the last week's market update we talked about how this we can label this as we're in the vicinity of higher low, right? Because this low is higher than this low, correct? Yes. So we got that low and we got this low. So we got the higher low. And we talked about for this to complete, for this to turn into a bullish uptrend, what is the definition of an uptrend? It's higher lows and higher highs. So we have that higher low. We're looking at it in a minor term perspective here. And we just wanted to see another higher high. We just saw that this is higher high. What does that mean? It means when this thing pulls back, as long as we stay in the fashion of higher low and higher high, we have to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers because we're now cultivating an uptrend. We're no longer just in the in the in the range we're no longer just in a sideway or just just you know what i mean just just volatile up and down. we're starting to cultivate something here right so i think that's a first sign obviously looking at more of an intermediate term perspective we are still in the vicinity of lower high and i see that but we're not 
cultivating lower lows. That's the important part. What is the definition of a downtrend? Downtrend is lower lows and lower lows and lower highs. We have their lower highs, but do we have a lower lows? We do not have a lower lows. If anything, we got equal lows. That's an equal low, and we got higher low. So bulls are starting to take advantage, starting to find momentum here. They're trying to find their place. They are uh, establishing their better battleground here. They have actually acquired a lot of this uh, real estate already, right? What bears really needed to do, they had to keep this momentum going. So they should have made another lower low like this. We got the high, lower high. Or yes, lower another lower high, and then they should finally cultivate it another or one last another lower low, so they can keep that downtrend going. What happened? What was a crucial though was I think here, this was a crucial moment for the buyers to protect that level to stand. A firm on that ground to protect that ground so they can keep this level as higher low this is very important guys I know this is this is subtle but this subtlety is gonna get you thrive in this market you see what I'm saying this is a reason why I follow up and what we talked about the, the week before and we continue on looking at the market on a weekly basis so we can look at these things see what's going on here so we have the buyers, what the buyers have done, what the bulls have done, bulls have already uh, done a lot of work, established quite a bit here. And you know, you know what the bear is gonna say is, well, this is a bull trap. Maybe that's a bull trap, and maybe we fall back. But you can see we're already trending. We're already trending some kind of higher lows and higher highs here. So we do have this downside gap. Right, that's definitely what the buyers want to fill that gap. We got this gap, this gap still unfilled, this gap still unfilled. So now with this island reversal, you know what I really want to do? I actually want to put a box there to really um, highlight this that this is indeed an island reversal, right? So I mean, you know, that's what I really recommend for you to do as you learn how to chart. So you would kind of put a box something like this to highlight. That, that is indeed an island reversal because island reversal is actually a big deal as long as we don't fill that gap you see this gap we want but the what the bulls now the bulls have established this island reversal what the bulls need to do is to protect this island reversal so that the bullish momentum could continue higher so let's see how we plays out next week let's see if the buyers can protect this gap protect this island reversal i think they can because this i they opened up this island bears their bears feel that last time after feeling this what because bulls got up feel this this downside gap and then bears came in and filled this gap so uh what's gonna happen is bulls gonna get up fill this gap and what the bears want to do bears gonna want to come down and fill that down that island reversal gap once again just like they did here so this time around something has to change bulls need to protect this ground right this is their battleground this is their protective level this is a level that bulls need to protect for them to uh, charge and continue higher so i think what's gonna be interesting is if once this gap gets filled see if the bears gonna bring players probably gonna try to bring it down and what the bear's objective is to fill this gap, this island reversal gap. And at that point, it will be interesting to see how the buyers protect. What could possibly happen is, you know, buyers can try to protect it and then get up. The, the best case scenario for the bulls is we see another gap up early next week and gapping it up above this gap area and making this into yet another island reversal if that happens i think at that point for sure we're going to get up here about 270 280 ish and fill this gap and then at that point we're going to see a pullback if that happens we're probably going to see something like this All right so the best case scenario for bulls give us another gap up gap above this gap 
and then make it into another island. At that point, I think I would have to say almost 90% surety that at that point we have uh, resume back up to its primary term uptrend. Doesn't mean it's going to go straight up. It's going to have up and downs. But at that point, bulls are uh, pretty much out, out of the woods. And this could continue higher and make new all-time highs and beyond uh, in the next couple months if we see something like that. So let's see how it plays out. We'll follow up next week. So let's see if the bulls can protect 270, 269 island reversal. That's what we want to see. Bulls, we want to see this island reversal holding and protecting. But if we do get, if it does get filled, the bears come down and fill it, it's not end of the world, but it's a bit disappointing because, you know, bulls tried it here. And then so this time around, bulls really want to protect it. We're just right on the 100 SMA as well. We're trading now above the 50 and the 20. They're about to cross to the upside. This is the first time they're crossing to the upside. You can see ever since this thing saw the plunge. And then when we saw that 220 and the 50 MA crossing to the downside, this is a since then, this is the first time you can see the 50 and 20 trying to cross up to the upside. Do you see it? That's a bullish cross. You see that? 50. 20 they're trying to cross up so what's going to happen is if this thing do slide next week if this thing if the bulls protect this level and if this thing bounces then for sure you're going to see the 50 and 20 crossing to the upside so let's see how he plays out next week we'll follow up on monday we'll go from there russell 2000 um is breaking out of this uh kind of a triangle formation right that's a good sign, but it's been going up, up, up every single day for about for about a week here, a uh, week and a half or so. Uh, we're back at the um, all-time high level. I think uh, sooner or later we're going to pull back. Either this thing gets up, right, you know, get hits one of these my expansion of Fibonacci and then pull back, or this could go a little more and then pull back, or it could pull back here and then do something like that. But overall, Russell 2000 looking real good here. I think the worst case scenario, you want to protect 155. The worst case in 150 is if there's some shenanigan happens next week, this is coming down hard, which is possible. We want to protect 155. And, you know, and then we can uh, kind of, uh, you know, we can kind of um, follow up next week. Or the best case scenario is just gap up above this level. Gap up above this level fans right that's a lot of resistance there heavy overhead in that vicinity people are scared because last time we hit 160 this thing tanked we hit 160 in march tanked but the good news was when it did tank it didn't come all the way down to the low it stopped short cultivated higher low another higher low so we're back at 160 a lot of people trying to take profit or trying to break even so they're scared here so either we gap up above this level or thrust higher or we may pull back to 157 again best case scenario gap up see a thrust right continue higher a little bit pull back to that gap area retest and then do something like that right let's see how he plays out next week we'll follow up cues Q's is in the mission. Q's bulls is in the mission to fill this gap. This is a downside island reversal. To make things really, really stressful for bears, we begin gap it up. Make into make this into a bullish island. This was a bears island right here, right? Turn this into a bullish island reversal, right? Right now, after this kind of move, a lot of short-term traders are thinking, well, this should pull back. Nothing should, something shouldn't, you know what I mean? There's nothing should do in the market. There's nothing do for something. You know, people like people like to say that, like it's do for something or it should do something. Like it should pull back. It's do for pullback. I mean, how many people said that in late 2017 and like, and like you know january 2018 right they're all saying the same thing in 2000 actually they've been saying it since um pretty much 
all throughout 2017, like this is a due for a steep correction. How many times you heard that, right? It's a due for a steep correction. It should see a steep correction. It didn't do that. And then it, as it continue to move higher, what is the people are saying? It's a due for a pullback. It should pull back. And then it kept going higher. There's nothing should or do for anything in the market. I mean, yes, there's a possibility of something, but it could indeed keep going higher. You know, sometimes unthinkable, unimaginable do happen in the market. Anyway, so um, yes, we did see a good move here, but that doesn't mean it should or it's a do for anything. It could very well continue higher by gapping it up, which is a best case scenario. Gapping it up is a best case scenario because that could provide for a jumping over the fence, which I like to call it, <coughs> excuse me, but if this gap gets filled, it's gonna act as resistance. That's the thing about it is, best case for bulls is just jump it up, gap over it, and continue higher, and then pull back later, and then do something like that. That would be the best case scenario. But if this thing continues higher and fill this gap, because that gap is pretty significant, we're probably gonna see um, sellers in that vicinity, and then it's probably gonna pull back. If it does pull back, if we do see something like that, we wanna see 164, 166, six level hole. So I'll put these two levels there before getting back up. On the NASDAQ though, we already cultivated higher high. That's a good sign. But I think a lot of people are still fearful of this head and shoulder formation. So if we don't gap it up above this level and turn this into a, a bullish uh, reversal, island reversal, and we just go and downright just fill it, then what's going to happen is it's probably going to come back. And we're probably gonna see it could see another shakedown. And there's that's when the bear's gonna come and say, aha, that head and shoulder's still alive. And at that time, this could see another shenanigan, right? But I think in I think what's gonna happen is it's gonna give you that one last shakedown before getting back up. But I'm getting too ahead of myself. I will follow up next week. We'll go from there, but so far, we are seeing a good cultivation. We are seeing higher lows, you see that? On the Ross, on the NASDAQ, that's definitely not a downtrend. Characteristic, right? Again, what's the definition of a downtrend? Lower highs and lower lows. Well, is this lower highs or lower lows? Are these lower lows? Well, that looks like a higher lows. And then we recently got higher high. We haven't gotten an intermediate time higher high, which is getting above this high, but we're seeing some good cultivation there. Let's go to XLF. XLF, good sign about XLF. Recently, I read an article called, uh, you know, um, the banks have bottom. I uh, wrote an article, when was it? I think May 4th right here with a bullish divergence, right? You put out your oscillators and, you know, the basically talked about how we got that uh, lower uh, low and then a higher low on the, um, on the uh, oscillator while the price action made um, new <laughs> price action made a lower low and and if you look at your oscillator um, it made a higher low right we talked about that if you looked at my uh, recent article that I wrote and uh, that has confirmed now we have the confirmation uh, we have gotten above the neckline we're back above 50 ma there we do have downtrend resistance let me actually put that in there that's the vicinity there. So now in the minor term, we have cultivated higher high. And that's a bad sign for bears because what the bears wanted to do, again, momentum thing, go up, come down, go up, come down, go up, and come down, right? And then like this or something like that. But now with the bullish divergence we have, we got above the neckline. We got the gap here, so we wanna see if this gap gets filled. We're, we're pulling back a little bit. We also have 100 SMA in that vicinity. Again, if we see another gap up, this could turn it into an island also. So let's see how it plays out. I'll go from there. Apple, somebody requested uh, to see Apple, so I'm looking at it. This is for you, because I was gonna look Apple today. But uh, looking at a daily here, you can see this is a daily chart. We are getting into overbought sentiment in the minor term. Again, that does not mean it should or do for a pullback because it could very well continue higher. But just kind of looking at this here, I mean, you know, we a lot of times when we get to that level here, right here though, you can see right here it kept going higher. Do you see this? It got into oversold level somewhere about here, 
but it kept going higher. This was in uh, February 2017. So this does not mean that it cannot go higher, but as a late since like, you know, July of late 2017, early 2018, when it did hit an over spot level, uh, the stock did pull back. So uh, it could very well pull back to some of these levels, but I think as long as we can hold, I think first level, if we do see a pullback, first of all, level supports 183. If we continue, 178. I can also do a fib here. Um, if market or the stock, Apple slides next week, but if like Q's gap up, indices gap up, it's probably gonna gap up with it. But let's say if this thing pulls back, you know, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a little bit more lenient with this. I think 175, as long as it's above 175, so, and you know what, let me put this back right here. Yeah, I think 183, 178, I think there's a good chance we come down here and kind of bounce right back. We do have a gap here, 176. So I think 176, 178, I think that's the worst case. I don't see this thing coming any lower. We're actually starting to nullify weekly bear subversions that I've been talking about. It's starting to nullify it, which is a good sign. And so, but I, I think it's still gonna be choppy though. Uh, Twitter, um, I think one thing I want to talk about on Twitter is finally though, we are trying to get, I know we've got some tail here. We're just kind of in this vicinity, but if we can hold, you know, let me put another level here. I think if we can hold 32, 31, because this is a neckline, we do have a higher low here. So even if he pulls back, if we can like maybe hold 31, continue higher, there's some good cultivation going. We don't wanna see this thing coming way down and breaking below this support. We wanna see, if, even if this thing comes down, we wanna see this thing holding, stopping short, not coming all the way down, and then gets back up to 36-ish level. Looking good here, GLD and Silva, I'll let you guys go. Good thing about GLD about it is right now, we are holding this level. This is important level, prior resistance and new support, current support, 200 SMA is still rising. That's a good sign. Uh, what I wanted to talk to you guys about is the monthly, not that one, but um, monthly chart here. We're still in a consolidation, but what I wanted to look at is silver. Silver, um, it is still, because we've been tracking this. My charting software is pretty slow today. Um, been tracking this, we're still staying up. I think at one point, yeah, at one point I thought this was like, this was like curling down, but uh, here, here's, here's a few things you, you wanna notice is that this thing got up, came down, but you notice this thing, come, this, thing, this thing didn't come all the way down to the bottom of his band, the oversold level. It stopped short. That's what I call stochastic higher low. This occurs when you when when the when the trend is about to be developed. Obviously, we're still in an early stage. This could still roll over, but we're not rolling over yet. Obviously, we still got a lot in May. But if this thing continues higher like this, right in this vicinity, which is a higher low vicinity, it didn't come all the way down to the uh, you know the extreme the oversold level. We stopped short in the middle. This is what you see. Uh, if this didn't get into a long-term uptrend, what you're gonna see, this gonna, you're gonna see something like this. This is what you're gonna see. And this thing oscillating back and forth, like that. That's when you get into, when this thing gets into like year, like uptrend for like a couple, years, like several, like multi-year uptrend. It never goes down to the bottom of the band. And for the fact that this thing stopped short in the middle, we're trying to get away from this downtrend perspective and we're trying to, um, right? We're trying to stabilize and trying to get back up here. So let's see how that plays out and we'll follow up uh, sometime. But um, that's it from me today. Have a wonderful weekend and good luck trading next week.